That's right. The champ is here, and we're ready. Monday, Monday morning, Monday morning. You know, we got it like that. The best radio show from Como to the Congo. If you're in Fort Worth, you should know where Como's at. You should. Be part of the world, which clearly you are, because you're looking at this on FBRN.us. You should know where the Congo's at. And if you don't know, you need to ask somebody. This radio show is loved by many, hated by few, respected by all. We're second to none, second to none. And you know, we've been hanging out for the last couple of days talking local politics. You know, last week we finished off with the Ukraine. But this time, we're going to make it a little bit more a little bit more down home for you. We're going to go back home. We're going to go to the hills. We're going to go to Forest Hill. That's right, Forest Hill, Texas. Yeah, we're going to Forest Hill, Texas. And, uh, you know, uh, well, in Forest Hill, Texas, we got a lot going on right now. And opening up this municipal season, municipal season, we just got through with the, the primaries. You know, we got through with that. You know, congratulations to all of those who won the primaries, and uh, hey, if you're in a runoff, come back and see your boy. But, you know, we have people that want to see me now and want to talk about municipal politics, and, uh, you know, we're going to start from the hills, Forest Hill. The mayor, uh, running for mayor of the city of Forest Hill, is the former mayor of Forest Hill, uh, Dr. Lindia Thomas. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. God is still blessing me. So I am doing super fantastic. And because it's a political season, I feel energized. All right. You see how energized I, I yes, was? Yes, yes. You saw that? Yes. You know, we got guests in the audience, and they were just sitting there looking. As soon as they say the champ is here, uh -huh. we rolled up like that. Then the voice changed. Everything changed. I started looking directly into that camera mm -hmm. right there so everyone could see us and you tell us about yourself and you know tell us about yourself and why you're running again mayor you, okay. aren't you you were that before yes 2017 the citizens of forest hill elected me as their mayor mayor of forest hill and i really enjoyed it prior to becoming mayor uh you know let me give you a little background about myself i'm a retired postal worker after 25 years um, I have uh, six kids together with my husband, Reverend Kevin Thomas, and I've been in Forest Hill for 42 years. I've raised uh, my children and grandchildren, and now I'm rearing a great-grandchild. Okay. So I have a vested interest in the city of Forest Hill. Okay. Now, I'm from Oak Cliff, and I say Oak Cliff, that's my hood. Mm -hmm. Where is Forest Hill? Where is that? Forest Hill is right at the corner of uh, A20, when you're coming from Arlington, it's at the intersection of A20 and 287, and that area is southwest of Fort Worth. Uh, bottom line is one of the suburbs of Fort Worth. It lays almost in the womb of Fort Worth. It's uh, between Everman, Kennedale, and Fort Worth, and there we are, Forest okay. Hill. All right. How, now, how many people live in Forest Hill? We have a little over uh, 12,000, almost 13,000. Um, you know, we've had so many changeovers or whatever. It's about 12,900 and something. You know, tell us more about the city. Of, of the Forest city uh, of Forest Hill is really uh, in a good location. If you ever want to rear a family, it's a very good city to uh, raise your family. Uh, it's right at the corner, as I told you, of uh, Everman and uh, Kennedale on about five minutes from Arlington. Mm -hmm. um, it's a community that you would love let, uh, allowing your children to play outside. It's a place that you can play and have fun and not really worry about your children. That's why I've stayed so long. It's a, it's a good area if you have a business because uh, it's right off of A20. It's easy asset on. It's near colleges. Uh, we're talking about Tarrant County College mm -hmm. in, the, in the vicinity, and we're talking about other little areas. We have a civic center there that people can have their parties and meetings and things of that nature. Um, it's where people know their neighbor. You know, you don't see that very often, where you can actually talk to your neighbor and you know your neighbor by name. And very few cities have that. It's like you know that person lives there, but you don't know that person. Bedroom community. It's a bedroom community, but it's a really, really nice community. Now, where are you originally from? Monroe, Louisiana. Monroe, Louisiana. Okay. Yeah, but I got here as quick as I could. Everyone always <laughs> say that. And, the, and someone told me back in 73, 
if you stay here long enough in Texas oh, well, to wear out a pair of shoes, you'll love it. Well, and they told me the truth. All right, from Monroe. So I know it's Monroe, then it's what, West Monroe? Uh-huh. Okay, yes. all right. I've been through that a couple yeah, of times. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I've been through that a couple of times. Mm-hmm. So you, uh, you moved here in the 70s? I moved here in 73. In 73? Mm-hmm. So what did yeah, you do? Yeah, I moved here in 73 because I ended up, my mom was here first. Okay. She was living here in Fort Worth. She was living in Fort Worth. And so I decided that after being in Monroe, which nothing was really happening in Monroe for me, so I decided to uproot and move to Fort Worth. And I've stayed ever since uh, 1973. And I've worked numerous jobs and I've had uh, leadership skills as far as working for different companies like we talked about the U.S. Postal Service. I even worked for the Fort Worth Police Department I, uh, in their warrant office for a couple of years. I've worked that's for... A, that's a big switch. Postal office and yeah. and uh, well, when people police are, department. Yes, when people are talking about transitioning you know, when you're tired of the career that you're doing and you don't feel like you're moving anywhere, I took a lunch break and went and took the postal service. On a lunch break? On a mean? lunch break. I took the postal service. Most people service. on lunch breaks, they go get a hamburger I know, or something I know, like but I was determined to get another job. And uh, the bottom line is I took the test, I passed the test, but it took them a couple of years to call me. And that's at the postal service? That's the postal service. Yeah, they do. They used to do yes, that a lot. Yes, you know. they did. You'll be on a waiting list. Yes. You pass the test. You Yeah, I moved to West Texas while I was waiting and came back, and I was still Where'd waiting. Where did you move at in West Texas? I moved out at uh, Canyon, Texas. My, my ex-husband was a uh, coach for West Texas State University. Oh, wow. That was about around about the time Dwayne Thomas was out there. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I'm, uh, Canyon, what's, Texas. What's yeah. his name? Uh, Mercury. Wayne, uh, Larry Bird and right. all of those. Yeah. Mercury Morris was yes. out there. Yeah. Yes, why well, he really had contact with That's beautiful with all of those. Uh, out there, Canyon, Texas. It's very beautiful. Palo Duro Canyon. Palo Duro Canyon. It is very yeah, beautiful. I put a night. smile on your face when yes, I said that. Yes, it did. I did. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. But it really... It wasn't for us because it was too small of a city. You know, it's like everybody know everybody. Uh, and my hus- my ex-husband at that time was trying to get a head coaching job. So, therefore, he went there to try to get years built up on his coaching on career. On football? Uh-huh. Okay. And uh, he ended up uh, going for a year because a year in a university would equate to 15 years at a high school college, okay. at a high school. So that's what we did. We went there for a year, and he got a head coaching job uh, <laughs> at uh, uh, I, what is not I am tell. He got a head coaching job uh, at a local school. Okay. So then you moved back here? Mm-hmm. Moved back here, and then uh, bottom line, just more or less sit out for a while. I ended up doing a lot of, different type jobs, trying to find myself at that time. But the bottom line is, once I decided that I really wanted a career and not just a job, Mm -hmm. I started doing things that would take me in that direction. When I worked for the Postal Service, I started taking breaks with people who were doing what I wanted to do to learn how to make that happen. So what did you do during that break? So I'm I'm, I'm scared of you during breaks and lunches. (laughs) I'm working Because you, 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 you're changing. You yes. know, if you work for me, it'd be like, you, you take a break or a lunch, and then I come back, you got you have my job. Oh, I don't so want your job. You no. want the one higher than that. I, I, I don't want your job. I want the fact. I want to either equal what you're doing, and if I get your job, I want to be able to pull you up with me. All right. Okay. See, it's a, it's a give and take. Okay. It's not about a take-take, and that's what people don't understand. Because Zig Ziglar once said, if you have enough people get what they want, They'll help you get what you want. All right. So now you're at the post office. Mm-hmm. And, and how did you transition for the post office to becoming the mayor? Well, when I was working for the post office uh, in 2008, I was elected on the city council. And I was still Wait, working so for the post office. So you was at the post office in yes. 2008, you was on the city council? Yes, yes. I, I decided I wanted to get back involved. And I knew I was looking toward retirement at that time. So I started getting involved in the city. So I decided to run for city council. You know, really, God put it on a dream. It wasn't my decision. He put it on a dream to go sign up to get on the city council. And I didn't even know what a council member was at that time. And so I went in. Uh, and told the city secretary I wanted to sign up to get on the city council. She says, what position? I say, he didn't reveal a position. She said, I say, you can pick the number, because I don't know. She said, it costs money. I say, he didn't reveal money to me. 
I said, so you can pick the thing, and I'm not worried about money. You just said sign up. So I signed up, and the next was history. I defeated a person who had been in that position for nine years. I beat him by 62%. Okay, you beat him by 62%. Mm -hmm. 2008, city council. Was that the mayor? No, that was, was the just city, council. The city council. I was itself? just on the council. Just on the council. Yes. Okay, 62% is, you it beat a, them by 62%. Yes. And I, for a person who didn't know what the job entailed, but I'm the type of person, once I go for something, I read up, I, I get as much education as I can to make sure that I can do the best that I can do uh, for the city. Now, this is a bedroom community. If you yes. beat somebody by 62%, yes. you beat them by 62%. So I'm just really amazed. You beat them by 62%? Yeah, it was about 62%. What did they do wrong that you beat them by well, 62%? I think, they, I think they were just ready for a change. It's not always the fact that they did something It's like this person that the dogs wrong. mess on the yard or whatever. <laughs> it had to be something. I have no idea what it was, but God wanted because me on that Because he made a lot of people mad. Because yeah. it wasn't even close. Normally yes. when you beat the incumbent, it's really close. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Yeah. Now, we're going to talk offline about but, that one. Yeah, I, mean, I thank God for it. It was all his doing, not mine. Oh, but okay. Did, I was right. obedient. He said, sign up, and I signed up. I didn't ask him any questions. Okay, if you're putting God in this, I didn't yes. leave it alone. I'm yes. going to leave it alone. All yes. right, so, what, what, so when you were on council, what, what were the main things you did? One of the things I interacted with the people, I also made sure that I listened. I listened to the people, whatever the concerns they had. I would try to fix them, you know, try to not, I, I tried to find things to repair whatever they felt like was broken. And if it was something I couldn't do, I talked to them and told them I tried everything, I just couldn't make it happen. I was honest with them. Oh, so you're one of those rare politicians that when, you know, because in politics it's a game of power. Mm -hmm. You know, I have the power, I have it the power. It's not so about power. It's not about power? It's not about power. What do you mean it's, it's, about a, power? it's about the people. It's about the city and it's about but the people. It's also about honesty. If you can do yes. something, you can. If yeah, I and can, if I can't, can, I'm going to let you know I can't do it. I can't it. do anything I about tried it. it. And if you ask me to do something, and I'll try it, and if it doesn't work, I tell people, don't wear your feelings on your shoulder. I tried it. It didn't work, so we're going to nix it. And it's the same theory uh, way I did when I was a manager at the Postal Service. That's why I was very successful uh, in managing people, because if you come to me and give me your idea, I'll try it. If it doesn't work, don't get offended if I stop using it. Oh, you confident like me. You said, I, I was very good. You didn't say I was successful. Yeah. You said, I was very I was good. Very good. <laughs> Yeah, I was yeah, the Michael. No doubt I used, about it. I'm, I was very yeah, good. Yeah, I used to tell people I was the so, Michael Jordan of the post. You're Michael Jordan of the post. Huh? <laughs> Come on now. Oh yeah, I'm telling you. I'm yeah. telling you. Tell me how much yeah, mail yeah, you got and how many yeah, people you have. Yeah, I can I, tell you how to move. I know you're in a faith-based community. Okay. Come on, man. All right. Come on. You just you, you came, you you came in being humble. Now all of a sudden you're doing me like this. Okay. <laughs> all right, okay. All right, she said, okay, so you know what we're going to do? We're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to, you know, get uh, Dr. Lydia Thomas uh, from the, uh, well, from uh, the city council to her being mayor, and then uh, we're going to close out. We're going to bring you up to speed because this is why she's here today because there's an election coming up in May. We want you to know about that, but we needed to give you background on that. So, Angelo, let's play some of our local drops, none of the political stuff this time around, because they all done with the uh, politicking for the uh, primary. So uh, let's just go ahead and play some of the uh, local drops from some of the Fishbowl Radio hosts here on FBRN.us. Who was that masked man? You mean you don't know? That was no masked man. That was the commish. Saturdays from 5 to 6 p.m. on the Fishbowl Radio Network. Hi, this is Howard Scott from The Howard Scott Show. Coming to you from beautiful Arlington, Texas on Fishbowl Radio. You can catch me every Wednesday from 6 to 7. And we play all this war music. And you get to hear some of the songs that I wrote when I was in the band War. How I created the songs, the stories behind it. And we start off with the blues. You have a good time talking to me. So tune in every Wednesday from 6 to 7 and catch The Howard Scott Show. We're having a whole lot of fun on Fishbowl Radio. Jump in. This is John Cruzel, your Democratic candidate for District Attorney for Dallas County. 
thank you to the Commish and Ed Gray and the Commish Radio Show. <laughs> The Pizza Man. Nowadays, most food spots are big on price and not on portions. But here with the Pizza Man, he's going to make sure you leave full and satisfied. Stop spending your money on food you and your wallet are going to regret. Come visit the Pizza Man here in Fort Worth and experience the best bold flavors made with real ingredients and passion. With 30 years in the business, Roy has mastered the art of the industry and will have your taste buds infatuated with the menu items. From daily carryout specials to more toppings than you can imagine, open seven days a week, the Pizza Man is here to provide the best in quality and cost-effective prices. You can't beat it. The Pizza Man, located at 4200 East Rosedale Street in Fort Worth. That's The Pizza Man at 4200 East Rosedale Street in Fort Worth. Hi, this is Howard Scott from The Howard Scott Show, coming to you from beautiful Arlington, Texas on Fishbowl Radio. You can catch me every Wednesday from 6 to 7, and we play all this war music, and you get to hear some of the songs that I wrote when I was in the band War, how I created the songs, the stories behind it, and we start off with the blues. You have a good time talking to me, so tune in every Wednesday from 6 to 7 and catch The Howard Scott Show. We're having a whole lot of fun on Fishbowl Radio. Jump in. Jump in. That's right. That was Howard Scott of War. You remember the group War? You know, Why Can't We Be Friends? The World is a Ghetto. Uh, what you know about that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know something <laughs> Back about in that? the day, I used to, uh, you know, like different type music. I love different types. Classical, hip-hop, uh, you know, so different music. All right, well, that's who I was with when you called me last Saturday. Really? Yeah, I was with Howard Scott. When I text you and say I can't talk right now, the mm -hmm. music was loud, I was yes. at a concert. Howard Scott was my guest at the Blues Festival. That's so, nice. You know, hey, I, I didn't know you, 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 you mm -hmm. got down like that. I love that blues. Time. I didn't know you got down mm -hmm. like that. I like blues very much. So. Oh. Next time around, I invite you. Mm -hmm. you know? But, you know, I have to invite Angelo, too, man, because, you know, I, I, Angelo likes blues, too, man, you know. Oh, we got other people now want to, like, come yes. on in now. I guess you <laughs> want to come on with it. But, you know, hey, you know, that's the way we roll. That's the way we roll. But we're going to roll back. We're going to roll back to uh, uh, back to 2000, what year? 2008. 2008. Yes, I was elected on the city, city council. council. How many times did you do on the city council? Two. Uh, they re-elected me in 2010. Okay. And then I became... They don't give you enough time on city council, just two years? Well, we changed it about three years ago to three years. Okay, that's about time, yes. you know, because yes, two years Yes, when I was like, mayor, we changed it to three years. Okay, all right. Yeah. So how many years total did you do? Um, see, I want to say... Five and a half or six. Okay, I know. You, yeah, when you yeah. came on the show, you said, I want to be interviewed, but there yes. was no math involved in it. No, you didn't. Yeah. You, you know, you got to give us head to yeah, head yeah. up on that math. Yeah, yeah, I understand. <laughs> no math involved. So uh, you transitioned from there to mayor, right? Yes. Uh, what, somebody went on, on during lunchtime, you decided you was going to no, be mayor? No, I did not do that. This, this wasn't a lunch Oh, break okay, thing. all no, right. Because normally one, that's how you change your jobs. Things, I no, noticed that. I see what a pattern made, in here. What made me do this is the fact that we had citizens that was approaching me and asked me to run for mayor. And I said, no, oh, because during that time, my husband was going through some illness and things mm -hmm. like that, and I was making sure that he was okay before I got involved in anything. And they constantly were saying, Lindia, we really need you to consider running for mayor, and, I, and we're going to support you, whatever. So I did. I talked about it with my husband. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, baby, I need you to go on out there and try it. He said, I'm mm -hmm. going to be all right. I said, okay, as long as you're going to be all right, I'll do it. So I did run, and I and the people did support me. So the rest was history in 2017. So this was this yeah. another 62 percent victory? No, I won by one vote. <laughs> <laughs> by one vote. Wait a minute, now, let me see if I get this right. <laughs> now, either they got better, or you got worse, because you got from 62 percent to you won by one, one vote. What happened? Because you're going for a. a the larger prize. Okay. Bottom line, when you talk about the mayor's position, you know, it's different from the city council because you got different seats that you could choose from, six of the seats, really, that you could choose from. But the mayor's position and this particular mayor had been in that position for a while. Okay, you keep beating people been in there a little while. <laughs> 
You just don't go just like one person versus the other, y'all both equal. No, you've been like, in there a while. So I, I, it, it, it's no fun beating somebody that's equal. Wait a minute, let me tell you a story, though. This is what was so so. You're really getting off into this conversation. Yes, <laughs> it was really amazing because first when they told me I had won, uh -huh. they told me I beat him by three votes. He asked for a recount. So we went down and had the recount. And when they final, when the final count was over, it was only by one. But like I told him, that was the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh. They're all one. See, I know. <laughs> See, anytime I come here with you on this show, now you, you faith based yeah. community. You, yes. You're a minister? Yeah. No, no. I, I'm an evangelist. You're an evangelist. Yes, okay. I'm an evangelist. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. All right, my mother was an evangelist too. Yes, so I, I love I love ministering to people and helping people any way I can. I'm a I'm a servant. Okay, I love to serve. It's not about me and it's not about money. It's about helping people because yep. you never know when you're gonna need the help. Yep. So you help people when you were uh, on on the mayor. city council and yeah, as mayor, I listen so, to them. You know, we have a section of our city that's a flood zone. And we got flooded while I was mayor. And uh, the Wait, bottom. Tell me about the flood zone. Yeah, we got a flood zone on the north side, of, mostly on the north side of uh, Forest Hill. But uh, when the people in, you know, had a flood, I went out and let my sleeves up. Councilwoman Hayes as well. She was uh, mayor pro tem at that time. And no, you're just dropping names. What's her name? I mean, Councilwoman Hayes. Becca Duncan Hayes. I mean, just say the whole yes. name because people Duncan. listening now right now, they're <laughs> going to they, Because they may Duncan. be taking notes and they be going, yeah. I don't Becca know. Becca Duncan I mean, Hayes. Uh, and we went around and we helped people clean out their houses and uh, work with Red Cross and different organizations to get people back on their feet. Uh, Mark Vesey, uh, uh, several people and organizations, uh, the Red Cross, Everybody. All right. Now, you said that parts of Forest Hill sit on the floodplain. Mm -hmm. What 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 causes it to flood? I mean, obviously water does, but which it does, which, but it's I think it's it's close to a railroad track and it's a lot of things. I couldn't be specific cuz I truly don't know if I really knew I could get the thing fixed, but it's like uh, we've gotten engineers. When I was the mayor, we've had, we hired engineers to try to find out the problem, to clean out the drainage, to make sure that it don't get, you know, it doesn't get backed up from paper and debris and stuff like that. But um, we are working on trying to resolve that. That's one of the things that I worked diligently on when I was mayor, and I plan on continuing to work on that flood zone area because it's something that affects the citizens, okay. and nobody should have to live like that. All right, so let's bring it to full circle now. Uh, your mayorship, uh, it was over, it would, your term rather, was over with, when was it over with? When I was mayor in 20, when I was mayor, uh, when I was elected in 2017, I stepped down in January of, uh, of, tw of 2019 because there was a rumor or uh, whatever, because there's an election coming up for me to rerun, and I had done so much for the city of Forest Hill. Anybody that would have ran against me really couldn't compete because I had brought the first city bus into, into the city. I, we had started a youth uh, reading club um, we had put sidewalks in. You didn't have sidewalks before? Well, we didn't have a sidewalk on the side that led to the school, and the kids would have to walk in the streets to get to school. So, and this I, is a majority uh, African-American city? Mm -hmm. Has it's, always it's been a majority mostly, African? Uh, it's mostly uh, uh, African-American and Hispanics. And so I just didn't feel like they was should. Was it always like that? No. It, in, the, in the beginning, back in the 70s, it was mostly uh, Caucasian. And they eased on in as time went on. I've been in Forest Hill, as I said, for 42 years. Okay. Right. And I've watched the transition. I've watched the change. Now, you were no longer in office in 2019, right? I did what? You were no longer in office in 2019? No, in 2019 I stepped down because we had another election for the mayor. The okay. mayorship was beginning to... Uh, start again in May of 2019. Mm -hmm. There was a rumor going around about uh, 
Councilwoman Becca Duncan Hayes and myself that we ended up with some tick, uh, having the city buy tickets for us to Michelle Obama, which was a lie. But that was a rumor because they wanted to put uh, the bad feelings out there to try to get votes. And they did it a couple of weeks before the election was going to start. So instead of letting them have something, a platform to run on, we decided to step down and then sign up the same day to run. Because if we step down, you can't touch us. And you rerun, the people have a chance to use their own minds. So in doing that, they thought they was going to steal a lot of votes, but they really didn't. Uh, just as many people voted for me during that time as before we had a runoff election. Uh, it came, came down to a runoff election or whatever. And the guy that I beat by one vote, he ended up getting back in. Okay, so now you're coming back to beat I, this same guy? No, he can no longer run. Okay, all right. So now you're coming, uh, coming I'm, back? I'm to run for mayor again. Again, okay. Yes, because we're going to do it again because Why? the city is going backwards. Since I stepped But they do, they lose their sidewalks or something? <laughs> no, they didn't lose their sidewalk, but they've get, they haven't gained a lot either. Whatever. It's like the okay. bottom line is we're not moving forward. It's almost at a standstill. And when you see that you don't have anything for your children to do, you don't have anything for your seniors to do, you don't have, we don't have, uh, you know, we lost a grocery store, which, you know, it's no fault. I don't blame anybody for that. But it's like we need, the things that we need, we need to be working on those things that's going to make people feel happy to be in Forest Hill. Well, you know, losing a, a grocery store in an African-American community creates Food deserts. Yes. How can you get another grocery store to come Oh, I, you know, that's something I would have to work on. And that's something I don't try to promise the people at this time because there's a lot of issues going on. First of all, so many people are going to the uh, website to order things. Mm -hmm. So many big boxes don't no, no longer want to be big boxes because the overhead is too high. So they're trying to keep their costs down while they sales up. And a lot, like I say, they're going to, but I was, Somewhere along the line, we're going to have to convince them to put something there for these group of people who do need, we need a grocery store in Forest Hill. What else would you bring? We have one, but uh, uh, we're going to bring some things for our youth to do. Like when we ended up having that reading club for them so they don't lose the knowledge they have during the summer, mm -hmm. we had a club, so they, and I mean they enjoyed it. We got the library involved where they would work with the kids, and uh, uh, Councilwoman Becca Duncan Hayes, and I, we would end up t uh, having the businesses, they would donate lunches for these uh, events that we would have. And we want to try to get the businesses to more or less work with them to try to help improve their business. And I used to go and have, you know, hang out at certain businesses when I was mayor so that people would be encouraged to come by even if they wanted to just holler at the mayor. And talk to you. Yeah. So be accessible the, to them. Yeah, so that was something I did while I was mayor. I would have, you know, go to Starbucks and have coffee with the mayor. People would come up to Starbucks so they knew I would be sitting there. So if they had concerns or issues, you can sit around and talk to me and let's talk about these things and see what we can put our heads together. Because like I told them, the seven people that's on the council can't solve all the problems by themselves. They're going to have to have the citizens involved. We, don't, we need the help. They're going to have to kind of help tell us, bring a problem, but try to bring a solution with the problem. And if you can't, let's figure out a way we can put our heads together to figure it out and make it happen. So seven people on the uh, city council. Yes. Well, I'm looking at your push card, and obviously you folks uh, at home saw it earlier. So let me read it. You guys have already read it. So <laughs> let me go ahead and get caught up on things. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Dr. Lydia Thomas has been a resident for over 40 years. We talked about that earlier, 40 yes. years far as here. Formerly served as an elected city council member in 2008-2010 and served relentlessly as mayor in 2017. Uh, let's do it again. That's you That's going back good. with the let's do it yes. again. Yes, it was very successful. We was doing things back in the day. It's like... People were getting involved. Citizens was getting involved. And it was a different feel, a different atmosphere. Well, I, I'm looking at this, and some of these things I, I'm seeing that people 
and other cities probably take for granted. You, sidewalks installed. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they take that for granted. And the bottom line is, to me, a community, every community needs sidewalks because it says something about that city where kids, even when they want to go out and ride their bicycles, they don't have to ride it in the streets, you know? Now, the mass transportation that you... you uh, I worked on that for 15 months while I was mayor. And uh, I negotiated with the transit system, at Metro Transit. So and that's I, the Fort Worth system? Yes, Fort Worth system. And I told them if they came with a price that I felt like the city could afford, then the council would hopefully work on it and agree to let it happen. And they did. It took me 15 months of negotiating because they came at a price. It was, you, it was outlandish. And I talked them all the way down. I'm gonna be honest with you. They, when I started out, they came at me with a price of five hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars for one year. I said, "Are you out of your homesick mind? We, we're a small city. We cannot pay that kind of money." Within the 15 months, it came all the way down to one hundred and ninety-four thousand dollars so a year. They wanted the city of Forest Hill to pay for five. I can't even say. Five, it. Yeah, five hundred some thousand. A little, a small city like Forest Hill. I said, no, they can't afford that. Uh, a predominantly African American yes. and Hispanic city. Yes, and so that would in turn be having people ride on a bus into Fort Worth. Yes, okay. Fort Worth, and any you know, all around Fort Worth, you could get on the bus. Uh, you can buy a pass for five dollars and go anywhere in Fort Worth all day, every day for $5. If you only want it one way, you can go 250 you know. Uh, that limits African Americans to be in this specific area if you're not on the bus. Yes. I, understand, I understand the concept of, yes. of, of major cities not wanting people to be on, that's what happened over in Arlington. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean I call it out, that's what yeah. happened in Arlington. <laughs> I lived in Arlington. But so I keep can in say mind, it. I want to I want to get kudos to Commissioner you, Brooks because Commissioner Brooks made it possible for us to get that bus the first two years with a grant, and it was free for us for two years. You know, and I had to fight to get it. I mean, I, if somebody came to you and said, "I'm gonna give you this for free for two years, just try it. If you don't like it, you don't have to." Sign I wish it they could do that here at the Fishbowl Radio saying? Network. Say, can you just give <laughs> okay. me a show for to free me, for two years? I'm okay. good. Okay, that, was, that, that ain't gonna happen. That yeah. was elementary. It was, yeah, that it was a no-brainer. Yeah. So that's what we did, and it ended up the people. You know, when I was campaigning, what made me fight for it for so long? It wasn't a platform I ran on when I won in 2017. It was when I was doing door knockings, the people were telling me they needed a bus. I said, okay, when I get in, I'm gonna see what I can do. So the rest was history. Once I got in, I made that my pet peeve. And I got with the transit system and we started working. Uh, uh, Dietrich Whitman, who was vice president of the uh, transit system and I, we worked together for about 15 months to make that happen. Well, you know, one of the things that I also noticed you say repaired six streets. Yes. Your they, streets were broken down, too? Well, there's a lot of uh, streets that need repairs in Forest Hill, but before I... And that I, wasn't said as an insult. That's just no, straight, I, the, uh, straight up. No, but the bottom up. line I mean, is it hadn't... I think they were telling me it was several years, but no one had worked on the streets. And, and that is the bigger issue that I find find out when it comes to cities that are run by African Americans and, and that a lot of the funding, and what you just mentioned, you're going to charge a city $585,000 that you know fully well that that city can't afford and then complain that that city has broken down streets when you're going to go ahead and extort because that's exactly what's happening. Uh -huh. That's extort. You can't say this. I can say this. But extorting a small city like that and extorting the people for that. Well, the bottom line is they... Because that's what's up. Yep. They came down off their price, and tremendously. They came down off their price, and it was something I felt like the city could afford uh, yep. because we had a two-year head start with the grant money not having to pay anything that first two years we had a head start on getting a plan together, and I, uh, and I shared the plan with the city manager where we could set money aside and still be able to have the bus. But 
Since I left, they got rid of the bus. That, no bus now? No bus. I'm, t- I'm bragging about <laughs> so, you bringing the bus in there. Yeah, you ain't got I no was bus. bragging about me bringing the bus in there, but the uh, current council, uh, four of them got together and voted the bus out. So did it raise taxes? No. Then why did they do that? <laughs> when you find out what you tell me. <laughs> you better ask somebody. You better ask somebody. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say that. <laughs> You've been up to speed on everything else. Why not say that? So, hey, that's it. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a quick break, and we come back, we're going to finish out. All right. I need a mark on the time. I can't see the time up there. Who was that masked man? You mean you don't know? That was no masked man. That was the commish. Saturdays from 5 to 6 p.m. on the Fishbowl Radio Network. Hi, my name is Gail Todd with Townview Realtors. If you find yourself in the market to buy, sell, lease, or maybe you want to be a part of this hot real estate market by investing, just give my team of professionals and I a call at 214-675-9572. Again, that's 214-675-9572. Or you can email me at gtodd88 at yahoo.com. With me... It's all about you. Take hey, this is No-No, host of the Black Mature Woman Show on Fishbowl Radio Network. Check out the show every Thursday from 1 to 3. So you can hear a sister that knows and understands other sisters. Don't miss Black Mature Woman Show. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. Hey, you know, whenever I want good Cajun food, I go to Thibodeau's, located at 107 North Cedar Ridge in Duncanville, Texas. They're really hot, just like the Commission Radio Show in Thibodeau's. Hot is this gumbo. We will see you later at Thibodeau's. That's right, that's right. We'll see you later at Thibodeau's. You know, I've often said that we must support black businesses. That's right. You know, if you're going to spin your dough, you don't have to go to, I can't say the name of the people's, but you know what, if you're going to spin your dough, you can spin it at Thibodeau's. I'm not going to mention no other doughs that you can spend your money at, but gumbo, sure, it's hot at Thibodeau's, just like the Commission Radio Show. So what we're doing right now, we're closing out, you know, uh, we're going back in time. Let's do it again. Let's vote for Lyndia Thomas, who's running for election, running for election again for mayor of the city of Forest Hill. And I I, I noticed right now she has, you can cash a check made payable to the Lyndia Thomas political campaign. I always got to put one of those things on there. We don't want nobody to say that this has not been a paid political advertisement. So that being said, can't get us on that one. But campaign donations can be sent cash out. And we'll let her go ahead and talk about that one. Uh, well, obviously, she's making it very simple, even for a country boy like me, and I'm not country, <laughs> Lindia Thomas. But you know what? What's not country is what we're trying to do in Forest Hills. They, they want sidewalks installed. Uh, they're repairing streets and, you know, get on the bus. Hey, we'll get on the bus, but there ain't one there. But we can all read that, but we can read this as well, as you've been reading as well. Tell us, uh, Dr. Lyndia Thomas, why should we elect you to be mayor of the city of Forest Hill? Because I'm going to move the city forward. And when I say I'm going to move the city forward, that means we're going to all work together, uh, try to get a team of council members and mayor that's going to work together to do things that's going to bring uh, b- businesses close together as far as imp- help them improve their business, have youth, uh, uh, things for our youth, things for our seniors. Uh, we want to more or less have a community that people would love. When they get home at the end of the day, they would love to come home to Forest Hill. They don't want to come and see that you buy a f- major freeway and there's nothing really happening. We want to try to beef up, get some uh, sit down restaurants. We have Luby's out there, which is a great, you know, restaurant and stuff, but we need options. 
the people in Forest Hill don't have a lot of options, and we need to give them some options. We need to let them know that you don't have to go to another city to spend your money. We need to make things available for them in the city of Forest Hill. So I feel like I'm the best candidate for that job. I'll let my sleeves up. My, you know, I have over 30 years of managerial experience, and I don't mind using that experience to help move the city forward. But the bottom line is I'm going to need people to get out and vote because I can't win it by myself. I have to have votes. And like I said, I'm a listener. I listen to the people. I hear their concerns. And I tell them, whatever it is that you need or want, work with me. Come with some solutions. If you don't have a solution, tell me what the problem is, and together we may be able to put our heads together with the other council members and, and resolve that issue. I feel like, you know, we have, I have on the council, as my council members right now, uh, we have uh, Becky Duncan Hayes, and we have Councilwoman Sonia Coleman, which are outstanding leaders, in my opinion. They are outstanding leaders. It takes four people to pass any law in our city. If I get on as mayor, and we're making sure that we try to get one extra person so that we can end up having four votes to change things for the better. It's not about power, it's not about me, it's not about a position, it's about doing what's right for the city and for the citizens. And if you can't do that, I feel like you don't need to be on the council. Okay, when is early, when is early voting? Early voting is April the 25th through May 3rd. And the election day, the final day to vote is May 7th. May 7th, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, and where can they do the, uh, well, where can you guys vote at? Yeah, we are uh, in the Civic Center at 6, 6901 uh, Wichita is where we vo uh, mostly uh, cast our votes. And I believe uh, early voting, you can vote anywhere. So you don't have an excuse not to get out and vote. It won't take you but 10 or 15 minutes, and probably less than that in Forest Hill because we seldom have a long, long line. All right. But we want you to have a long, long line mm -hmm. because we want you to vote. We want you to fall in love with democracy. You know, yes. it's Mother's Day is coming up in May. You know, we want you to go ahead and honor, the, you know, the people that have birthed democracy, and that's been the, the sisters. Uh, the African-American sisters, and that's because it's Women's History Month. I'm going to work that one in there because, well, that's the reason why you're here, because we're celebrating yes. Women's History Month. And well, I wanted you to be one of the, well, the first well, woman we you. interviewed. That's what I said uh, when I did the pre-interview with you. But true to the word, this radio show is the best radio show from Como to the Congo, and we'll see you guys later this week, Commission Radio Show. Who was that masked man? You mean you don't know? That was no masked man. That was the commish. Saturdays from 5 to 6 p.m. on the Fishbowl Radio Network. Hey, how you doing? This is Ed Gray of the Commish Radio Show. Stay tuned and tune in and be up to speed on everything in social justice, human rights, and politics on the Commish Radio Show, airing every Saturday, 5 p.m. on the Fishbowl Radio Network. Jump in.